Good evening everyone, this is Zol and I am back like a bad smell that refuses to go away and we are tackling the third of four videos in the introduction to program series that I'm doing and before we get started I would like to say thank you for all the messages I've had, I truly appreciate it I'm glad people are kind of uh, benefiting from the video series that I've made and although we're not going into any great depth, I'm glad that it's helping people get involved and uh, staying up with the programs and the best thing you can do a lot of people have been saying you know th thanks for taking time out to do this and you know not a problem not a problem at all but uh, the best way you can thank me is just by posting it on Facebook posting it on Twitter I want to get as many subscribers as possible so that when I make take the time out to make these videos you know we're gonna be having enough people watching them to make it worth my time uh, I'm not trying to kind of uh, steal anyone's viewing audience on the big tutorial sites I'm hoping to keep it kind of abstract and uh, keep my stuff different to what they're making so that I can still hopefully pull in people and they'll be interested in what we're doing so uh, without further ado let's you know head straight on into Illustrator this is what we're going to be tackling today and on the left side you can see you can open a recent file that you've been working on and on the right we have the kind of templates that you can choose to work on, CMYK if you're working with a uh, print document, uh, video and film if you're working to a video size. I'm just going to choose basic RD, RGB document and we have a very familiar dialogue, it should look familiar now, especially if you've done the Photoshop video. If you haven't, I suggest you go back and have a look. And here we can select the uh, points per inch, which isn't going to be um, important unless you go to export your picture and uh, here we have the hip width and height you can switch it to landscape portrait here we're just going to stick with portrait and the first thing you are going to notice is that we have a kind of bounding box but this area is not absolute I'm going to go up here and uh, this allows you to create a basic shape I'm going to drag out hold shift to constrain my shape select it and as you can see unlike Photoshop where if you take stuff off it will disappear this box here is just purely to show the area that you can be working in if you're working like A4 for example you can select A4 from the templates and you will know that your picture will fit within that but at the same time you can bring stuff outside say you're not using uh, something you can bring it down here you know this kind of screen will go on for as far as you want really so you can keep stuff outside if you're not sure and uh, it's kind of cool actually now the first thing that I want to tackle before we actually get into the specifics of what works and what doesn't and how stuff gets made in here is that I want to show you the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator because that is going to be the main question on most people's lips if you haven't used other programs too much and I'm going to demonstrate this simply by zooming into 400% we have down here and at 400% you can see that the edge of the circle is still completely utterly smooth and that is because this circle and all shapes and uh, things made in Illustrator are vectors and by vectors I mean these are dynamic calculations which are being calculated between the vertices which we have four of here and we know this is perfectly round circle and this is being created on the fly I can scale things anywhere I want and the line will always be perfectly smooth and that is the beauty of a vector you can create an image as big as you want it can be the size of a building it will not matter these uh, shapes will stay completely no matter how far you zoom in will stay completely um, crisp and let's now have a look at a raster image which is what we would be creating if we're working with uh, pictures and whatnot. I'm going to scale this up to bigger than it should be and then zoom into 400 like I did before and as you can see this picture is not responding well to being zoomed into and that's purely because it is made of pixels which are these little squares and ras all raster images are made up of pixels and if the more you zoom in the more this will become apparent if you zoom in anywhere past a hundred if the picture is scaled properly which it isn't I scaled it up too far so it's already starting to break up here 
but that is the beauty and also your file size will be dramatically smaller if you are working with vectors which is really handy because it does not have to calculate and save every single pixel it just has to remember the calculation between the points that you are working on and so your your file sizes are going to be tiny in comparison to Photoshop files which can if you're working with many images you know can just kind of balloon to the size of gigabytes if you're not careful so that's the main advantages that we're working with here and also you'll see later on that um, when you start to manipulate shapes this comes in very handy as well if you start squashing a raster image your pixels are going to be doing all kinds of weird things and uh, won't look great when you zoom in close up okay so let's get onto the interface so uh, let's just explain the basics of this program as you've seen before I can make shapes using here we have the basic kind of um, I'm going to bring a star in here and once again I'm going to shift if I hold spacebar we've gone through this before I can move this dynamically at the moment this looks like a see-through um, white well it is not if I select um, the shape it is actually a fill which is the left one here I'm going to change this to red just to demonstrate so we have a fill and we have a stroke which is the uh, black outline here and that's here if I select this and bring it to the foreground we now have the stroke selected so if I double click I can change the color of the outline I'm gonna just change it to um, blue just to demonstrate and that was clearly a bad choice uh, let's try dark kind of green and this is kind of hard to see so what I'm gonna do is select the shape go up to the context sensitive menu here and as we can see the stroke is one pixel at the moment if I select 10 here I'm gonna be able to see this much much easier and the beauty of uh, Illustrator is every thing that it creates has a stroke and a path which gives you uh, two sets of controls and um, the great thing about paths is you can change them dynamically if we go up to here stroke if you don't have it window stroke and as you can see this if you look at the interface I have it set up a lot like I do Illustrator once again it's the whole thing of you can move uh, windows around and kind of uh, have the interface how you want it and I, I'm going to bring the stroke menu up here and there's just so many things you can do with the stroke if you click here we have a dashed line now we can make the stroke dashed which has obvious advantages you can change the width of the dash yeah we have six I'm going to turn the dash off you can uh, align the stroke you can obviously you've seen uh, here you can change the way it kind of wraps around corners can you see now we have kind of um, less of a point in and bring back the point now um, yeah I think that's that's the kind of that covers the basics of uh, how the stroke and the fill work and like I said any anything you do uh, even to text to um, the shapes unless of course you use a pen now with a pen you have the uh, freedom to be able to um, make a shape like I just have there so same thing or you can always just stop the path by clicking off here and now you have uh, something that looks horrible the great thing is that you can by selecting we need to turn the fill off here so bring the fill to the foreground by selecting it if we click this little icon here and then so you can create just normal strokes with no fills and um, I'm going to do this here for example I can turn the fill off now so it's just the outline and uh, even better you can inverse this so you can make the the fill black and now I have no stroke and you can swap that around and if I have uh, to demonstrate this better select this pink uh, bring my stroke back to 10 and if I want to swap the colors it's as simple as clicking here okay so let's go through some of the um, stuff in the menu here we have the brush tool and that is just like a freeform pen tool and once again we've created something like I just showed you earlier and we, we could turn the stroke off and such uh, change the color of the fill and the great thing about this is we have a brush menu which I'm not sure I'm gonna bring it up here brushes and here we have it and if I go here and 
artistic, calligraphic, and actually I think we're going to use um, the chalk pencil ones which are always cool. And now if you select anything with a stroke, you can uh, change dynamically of course. Um, I'm going to turn the um, fill off just for now. So we have just a stroke here and I can dynamically change it. We have these kind of pre-made brushes and you can get different effects from um, selecting them. And you can even make your own and can you see just from having made that path now I can um, create something which looks like it's been hand drawn and very cool and uh, that can be used obviously to great effect. And you can create your own brushes which is cool as well. Uh, that's one for another day. So yeah that's great, that's the uh, brush tool and the pencil tool works in a similar way. Uh, I don't want to confuse you too much, I'm trying to think. The symbol spray is cool if you uh, select that. And uh, this is going to spray whatever's open in your um, symbol library. So if we go to uh, Windows Symbol Libraries, and here we have a whole bunch of um, pre made libraries. Uh, I'm trying to think, maybe arrows? Uh, bring arrows up. And um, although this is not going to be the best example, select symbol, and you can now spray these bad boys everywhere just by holding down. And now we have kind of space invaders. Um, type scene and this can be cool if you want to create like if you have a little ant brush or ant symbol once again you can make your own symbols and you want to spray a load of ants you don't want to duplicate them and uh, spend your time doing that so it can be a great time saver uh, this is the graph tool I've never used it in my life mesh tool once again a bit advanced um, gradient tool is cool let's, let's have a gander at that Right, let's make a circle. Once again here, the circle looks completely invisible because we have our stroke and our fill deselected. I'm going to turn the fill on here. Select a blue color. Now we have uh, a fill but no stroke as you can see. So you should be getting the hang of this right now. Uh, let's select the gradient tool. And as you can see I have my gradient tool here and if I click just in the middle here we have applied a gradient to our shape which is great. If I press G I can now um, apply the gradient in any kind of different way I want by keeping this closer together you have a lower fall off by making it longer you have a bigger one and you can then dynamically select one of these points uh, open my RGB table here and I can change that point to blue I can change the white point to um, pink and now we have a lovely kind of gradient circle and you can change the mode to linear as well or radial, I'm going to leave that linear, I like it press G once again you know all that good stuff uh, that's how the gradient tool works um, as you can see here if I try and swap this to the stroke the gradient cannot be applied to stroke so bear that in mind uh, Color eyedropper tool, which is just for once again selecting the color that you have. If you have a gradient selected, like I do in this case, it will just uh, pick your gradient. That's a kind of fairly basic command that you will probably have seen. Aha! Enough rambling, let's get to the cool stuff. Right, I'm going to um, show you this tool, which is probably one of the most useful things about Illustrator. I'm going to make a rectangle here. And um, as you can see, it always already has our gradient selected. I'm going to change this though, just to demonstrate better. I'm going to select the colors here and change them to something different. We now have a square apple. Okay, um, I'm going to select these two here. And I'm going to select the blend tool. Drag one to the other. That's not how you do it. I haven't used Illustrator in a while, I apologize. Um, select them both, go to blend make. And that's going to look hideous. So what we're going to do is go back and select Blend Options. I'm going to knock Preview on, and we're going to set this to Steps. And as you can see, at the moment we have one step. But let's let's uh, crank the power up. Set this to maybe 40. Now you're thinking, whoa, now what's going on here? 